hello everyone happy thursday hope all is well with you first i want to say rest in peace to um prince marky d from the fat boys let me tell you something that's kind of a surprise i'm really surprised about this because i remember when did i meet him i met prince marky d on my college campus shout out to my alumni saint augustine's college what's up kyle i met him he was on campus uh 96 i don't know who did the press run for saint aug like a lot of celebrities were coming through when i um arrived as a freshman but he was on campus and he was one of the first like um 80s classic hip-hop celebs that i met and i remember he was giving out 50 dollars to any student that could bring him back a picture of a dog i remember that to this day and we <laughs> yo it was so many people in the yard from saint or was rushing back to their dorm to find a picture um of their pet or any any dog to bring to prince marky z he was just chilling on campus like y'all give me 50 dollars and i think somebody found a picture i couldn't find my picture i had a dog couldn't find my picture but anyway rest in peace to him his legacy is never to me never forgotten because i remember watching a bunch of fat boys um videos especially on MTV and Video Music Box. So that is definitely in my generation. So, you know, rest in peace to the life and legacy of him. On another note, it's New York. It is still snowing in New York. I woke up this morning. It was like... It wasn't snowing when I woke up early this morning, but I was just like... I had to like um, step out to travel to work. And I was like, yo, are they going to, like, let us know? Do we need to come to work? Corporate. Mm. And I was like, Psst. I'm probably going to have to come there and turn around and come back home. And that's literally what happened. So, I'm going to tell you something. It hasn't snowed in New York like this in the past five years. So, this is just mind-blowing. Um, definitely, I want to keep the people in Texas and the Midwest in my prayers. I also think you should pray for them as well because people don't got, they, they don't got, excuse me. People don't have water. They don't have heat, food. Oh man, it's crazy. And I'm just like, Texas is that state that's supposed to be so rich in culture and they don't even have taxes. As far as I know, let me see. Texas. Las Vegas, Delaware, I don't know about Jersey, what's up? Um, They don't have taxes, so I'm trying to understand why Texas don't uh, immediately act fast with getting shelter for all these, these uh, citizens, excuse me, that need, like they need somewhere to stay and they have a deep freeze but you know texas is not main their weather is not like that they usually have hot hot weather so i'm just like wow they didn't prepare them like they didn't think about that you know it's, it's just it's just it's an eye opener it's mind-blowing right now but yo shout outs to and pray for the people in texas and if you know somebody that's really gonna go down there or actually donate uh, funds or help to the people where they're going to actually get it, uh, definitely let me know. Yes, rest in beats, Prince Marky Day. Um, I'm just like, yo, it's already February and we already have a lot going on right now. So I'm just telling you guys, if you 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 pitching that what's going on in Texas, you definitely need to be prepared because you just never know. No matter what state you're in, um, try to make sure you have things that you need, like food, water. Listen, 
Not for nothing. I really think that we all need to go out and buy generators because it's getting real out here. And you just never know with the way the weather is going in. And I think tomorrow, um, I'm based in New York. It is supposed to snow again. I mean, we're used to snow, but now it's totally, I don't know. Snowing now in New York is totally different. Like, people want to stay home. And I woke up this morning, like... I was just like to stay home, do my work, do what I got to do, and that's it. But it's real out here. So, if anything, if you don't take anything from this video, go out and get you a generator. Do not get a gas generator. Get, um, I forgot, it's a, it's a certain type of generator you need to get. Go out and, go, and get a generator. Always keep gas in your car, full tank. People don't ever tell people that they I don't know why people don't mention that but keep gassing you just never know you might have to be running from somebody you just never know anyway um on another note Meek Mills I don't follow Meek Mills like that I just think this whole I don't know his anger or whatever's going on with him it's just a little crazy to me only time I think uh, or listen to Meek Mills is on a Knowledge uh, beat. Shout out to my, my favorite, one of my favorite producers, Knowledge. He likes to do a lot of remixes with um, classic uh, old and new. I would say more classic Meek Mill vocals. He'll do the remixes for that. That's the only time I listen to Meek Mills. But other than that, I just think it's so much going on in the world that we have to be thinking about Meek Mills flipping out and Takashi 6 9 running up on him. I mean, like, guys, you guys have to really pay attention to what's really going on with these artists out here. It is baffling to see a lot of these, um, quote-unquote, rappers getting gunned down. Rest in peace to Pop Smoke. Um, even artists I've never heard of until they pass away, King Von, oh man, the list goes on. So rest in peace to them, but we have to really pay attention because it's like, I remember I think, uh, Tupac said, uh, you know, they think artists she is better dead than alive. And, and let me tell you something, it is true, guys, people are... The artists that are getting gunned down, they are sadly not reaping the benefits of of the work and the notoriety and stuff that they have got to that point in their career. They're not here to even enjoy it. And it's um, sad to see that. So I suggest to any artist that if you're coming up producer, MC, singer, don't sign with no major label. Don't do it. It, it doesn't make sense anymore now. It, it, I mean, it didn't even really make sense back then. When you look at all the unsung videos, that's something I like to look I like to look at documentaries, unsung, um, that show. And a lot of them, they talk about the issues with the label or management. And, it, it, it you know, I, I did management, so... It, 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 when you look at the unsung videos, you be like, oh my God, they make management look crazy. You know, so that's why artists, if you find a good manager, you better hold on tight to that manager and um, hopefully you guys can build a rapport where you trust each other that stuff like what you're hearing on the unsung and currently going on now um, doesn't happen. I noticed for whatever reason, I'm seeing managers now or getting interviewed after their artists have been gunned down, killed, murdered, all of that. And it's just weird to me because I've experienced managing artists, but I would be in my feelings in some type of way where, you know, God forbid, one of my artists pass away and then I got to do an interview. Like, come on, son. I am not doing no interview if my artist just passed away. No time soon. I, that's far from my mind. So you have to look at it when you see artists 
with like King Vaughn's manager. He he looks very suspect to me. And a couple other people with they doing interviews instantly after they um their artist has got murdered. You like, wait a minute. You kinda have to like sit back and look like did they really care about their artists? You know, like I understand you might want to explain stuff, but real most artist managers they kind of move in silence to a certain point when explaining stuff or if they talk about stuff is years down the line or yeah i mean months down the line years down the line not instantly when the orders pass away so like guys we need to be like looking at certain things sometimes it's not even the the ops as people would say it's usually the people that's close to you that will just um pretty much do you wrong, do you dirty. So, I don't know. Industry is crazy right now. You have to pay attention to, like, what's really going on. Um, Yes, right now, people are talking about Tiny. They're talking about T.I. I don't follow Tiny and T.I. Um, stuff. I just noticed, I mean... Here and there, once in a blue moon, if I'm flicking through TV, if when I do watch TV, um, I have watched The Family Hustle. And at that time, it was a really good show, but it's been a long time since I watched it. But now, you know, hearing all these allegedly allegations, it is mind-blowing. And let me tell you something. I don't put it past anyone. I don't put it past them. I'm not saying that T.I. and Tiny did anything because we don't know until we have facts. I'm really all about receipts, facts. I need to know. So give me some proof before I can go out and say this person did this, Tiny or T.I. or whoever else. Like, proof should be in the pudding. I don't think we should run with stuff that we hear people say, but it's just... If they... If it is true... What they are saying that uh, T.I. and Tiny have done or allegedly have done, honey, that is, listen, you think that's mind-blowing? Just imagine when other uh, probably artists get exposed or whatever that that is. So, and nevertheless, my advice to you guys is to um, not look to these artists that are out here, whether they are... A-listers, up and coming, in between. They are not God. Do not treat them like God because they are human. A lot of these artists, you know, they are human just like we all. We all make uh, mistakes. We all have issues, problems, the list goes on. You need to treat whatever artists you have like humans and you don't know their personal life. Don't get it twisted, guys. I'm going to tell you from an artist management perspective Artists that you see when they put out their music, that is a totally different mass compared to what you see behind the scenes. It's too different. You got the image, and then you got the real behind the scenes uh, nonsense. I'm not saying all artists are like that, but a majority of them are like that. So we have to maneuver in a way, yes, you can love and support the artists that you love, you know, however, they are human. You have to remember that. And that they... What's up, um, Kenny? They, these artists are human. And um, they just... They fuck up like everybody else does. That's unfortunately what it is. And just so you know, a lot of artists, they deal with a lot of stuff. They have mental health issues. Um, like severely drug abuse, you know, a lot of that comes also from the upbringing, how they were raised and everything. You have a lot of artists that been through a lot as kids. That's why I tell people it is very important. What's up? It's very important if you have kids. I don't have kids yet but I have niece and nephew, that you make sure the kids around you have a positive upbringing and that you give them an open channel to be able to, to come and talk to you if need be. Sometimes kids can't even come and talk to their parents. It's better that they um, 
but it's better that they know somebody outside of their parents if they can't they should be able to come talk to their parents but nine times out of ten i mean if you've experienced like i have certain things you can't talk to your parents but you need to have someone that kid just know whatever kid is around you they need to have someone in their life that can come and they can come and speak with them openly about whatever they're going through so they can guide them properly with proper advice you know so in that sense that's where we are at with that a lot of people have been talking about the shoddy uh box set i definitely want to get it i hope it doesn't run out um once i get it i want to do unboxing i pray that i get it the vinyl i think is it's like six of her albums classic albums shout out to sade she is one of my favorite vocalists you know can't go wrong smooth operator the only artist that i know excuse me that can come out with an album every 10 years and kill it and win Grammys and awards and press and all of that. The only people I can, that I know that can do that is her and um, D'Angelo. They can come out with a project every 10 years and people will be all over it and it'll be just phenomenal. So anyway, shout out to Sade. I look forward and hope that I will get that box set. Now... Other than that, um, reach out to your friends. If you ain't talked to your friends in a while, and um, check up on them, see if they're doing okay. You know, check up on your family, see if they're doing okay. Uh, family is important. Don't get me wrong. Friendship is definitely important. But also what I would tell you is that we are living in a day and age now that people have pretty much forgot what friendship is all about and they forgot about <laughs> uh, respect. You need to know how to respect your friends, your family, and it should be some type of respect level and the communication level should be on high. A lot of people nowadays, they don't know how to communicate effectively and it's very important with us now if you're an adult... You need to know how to communicate if you don't like something. And I'm going to tell you something. Um, it's not cool when you see people that's supposed to be friends and then you find out it's some drama or they're getting taken advantage of or whatever the case is. Not cool. If you realize, if you're watching this live and you realize you're around people that you feel like who don't care or reciprocate as they should, not saying that every time you do something for them, that you that you expect something in return that's not what friendship is about you want to do french you want to be a true friend um authentically and and genuinely so um but at the same time you don't want people to take advantage of you so i say this that if you have people around you that are like i would say energy suckers they want to be around you they want to be up under you they want to know what you're doing they want to know your business you have to be mindful that uh, you don't need people like that in your life. What's up? You um, you need good people that are going to encourage you and that are going to tell you when you are wrong. A lot of times we have friends. I I ain't have friends like that. All my friends, be just, they keep it too real with me. But... Um, I know people that have friends who don't keep it real, who are not honest. You want to have people around you who are going to tell you, tell you about yourself whether you like it or not. That's just point blank, you know? And speaking of that, when I say tell you, you know, tell you about yourself, I see, and this is from a, a female perspective, I see a lot of women out here, uh, you know, when they present themselves to the world and they go to meetings or they come out in public or whatever. And they don't care how they look. And they have friends. And the friends is not telling them, hey, listen, what's going on with you? You look 
off or something's going on or you know you, you want to make sure whoever you're with even if you don't know them well it depends it depends on the relationship you have with that person but you want to have people in your circle where you guys can take constructive criticism and a lot of times people don't take constructive criticism people don't like to be told their faults I get it. I understand you, you feel crazy, like, dad, like somebody's coming at you. But you want to have good friends that's going to say, yo, what happened to you today? Why you look like that? What's going on? Are you, are you eating right? Are you getting any sleep? Some encouragement, but the approach is everything, you know? So that's what I would say with that. Now, also, got to be careful going out into the world especially being a woman because you never know who's watching you on top of that and you never know people are out here right now doing crazy stuff they are like the crime rate has went up guys um safety is an issue people just doing all types of weird stuff so you want to be mindful of how you maneuver in this world and just think fast on your feet and be safe at all times. Now, I have people that ask me all the time, who does your makeup? Who does your hair? Blah, blah, blah. So I want to get into that just a little bit because people ask me. Now, I'm 44 years old and I'm proud to be 44. I don't I don't understand to this day. <laughs> excuse me. Sorry. I don't understand to this day why um a lot of women um or people, I would say mainly women, they don't like to tell their age and I don't understand why people in this world, especially the young people, they like to bash people for being older. Listen. I am the type of person I would want, um, I want to get up in age. I want to still be in the know. I still want to be able to keep myself up. You know what I'm saying? I remember I was in Brooklyn one time at the bank in downtown Brooklyn. It was freezing cold, like how it is outside right now. And I think I was in my 20s, late 20s. And I was online. It was in Chase Bank downtown Brooklyn, this lady, black lady walked up in the uh, bank. She, I'm telling you not, she looked like she was about between 70 and 80 years old. She had a bad coat on. It was like an old school coat on with the fur on the collar. She had a cute little wig on. Nails was done. She had beautiful legs. Actually, she had the same style of legs like I have. And she had on some sheer stockings down. This one's the time. And she had stiletto heels. Stiletto heels. I think them joints was like three to four inches. And they were skinny. And she came tipping in the bank. And let me tell you, it was probably about... 15, 10 to 15 people online. And they stopped and looked at her. I mean, yes, yeah, she looked older in the face, but she was really well put together. And they was like, yo, did you see that lady with the stiletto heels? Honey, she came in there. She got her money, her funds, whatever transaction she had to get. And she tipped right out there, right out the bank looking cute. And everybody was talking about how wonderful it was to see her at that particular age even though we didn't know the exact number that she was still killing it that's that's what i'm talking about that is a beautiful thing when you see people of age like that that are still killing it i always tell myself like listen i want to be 50 60 70 uh 80 90 years old with stiletto hills sneakers just because you look older or or you are older in age don't mean you got to act like it. That is just me. But that was um that that was impressive. But nevertheless, um and this is aiming more to women. Women, we have to keep ourselves up because you just 
never know who is watching and you always want to stay ready just in case of an emergency you just never know so a lot of times people will ask me they'll ask me who did your makeup i think that's what i get the most and i'm gonna tell you guys um and i highly suggest that women young girl i don't think young girls should wear tons of makeup I think you, because you're still, your face is still evolving. It is still um, growing. You're growing into yourself. You're forever changing and evolving in age. Young girls, you guys are ODing with the makeup. Meaning, tons, I'm seeing from 16, sometimes 13. 13 year olds, you shouldn't be wearing makeup. But 16, all the way up to 25 with tons of makeup like tons of foundation the serious cut creases the serious eyeshadows i'm like you would think every day if you see the makeup that women put on now as well as young girls even grown older grown women you would think it was halloween and it's not halloween <laughs> You would think Halloween was every day and it's not Halloween every day. But you'd be like, wait a minute. What happened to natural beauty to a certain extent? Yes, you know, you want to... Women, yeah, we want to enhance. We want to, um, you know, stand out. But it's like, how much attention are you going to get? You know, in that sense. So, what I'm saying is, if you watch this segment... As far as when I'm talking about makeup, I really think young girls should not wear tons of makeup. If you're going to wear makeup, lip gloss, lipstick, a little bit of um, eyeshadow, mascara, but don't kill it. I didn't really start wearing makeup until mid-30s. And it's because I wanted to switch up my look and evolve a little bit, so that's why I wear it. But what I will tell you is, is that people lately have been asking me and i like natural where it's soft it's not too crazy i mean yeah you have your moments you have your day your day look your night look or whatever so today i thought i was gonna be able to stay home and not go to work but i had to go to work right and so people be like yo what you have on now, I will tell you, skincare is everything. You need to have good skincare. Because if you don't have good skincare, your makeup is not going to come out flawless. And you don't need tons. And I was told from different makeup artists, a little bit is just, it's just the perfect amount is all you need. Not too much, just a little bit, or just medium coverage, and you're good to go. So... I went to work today, I did my makeup, and people were like, oh my God. I did my makeup, I did my eyeshadow. Listen, the reason why I could say, and people ask me, hey, who did your makeup, is because I, <laughs> throughout the years, it's trial and error. You know what you like, you know what you don't like, and you, you learn. You know, I'm big with learning. I'm big with learning how to improve my look naturally, without going overboard i'm big on learning certain things and dealing with production music or vinyls just like i like to learn so in this sense makeup is one of that so when people ask me today you know they'd be like hey what kind of makeup you have on or whatever you have to really invest in quality makeup and learn how to do your makeup so I did my makeup, I took my time, and you know what, when I used to go to work, when we was in the office a lot, people were like, oh, you know, they would think, they were like, a lot of women would say they don't have time to get their makeup done or whatever. Listen, it only takes anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes, maybe the max 15, 20, that's all it should really take um, to do your makeup. So if you got time to... Go to the store, Starbucks, and get you that Frappuccino. Or go to the grocery store to get food. Or go and buy some clothes. Then you should have time to present yourself 
and make sure your hair is done and your makeup's done and your outfit looks on point, shoes on point before you step out into the world. That's just me. So I went, when I got to work today, and usually I'm like, one, two, three, got to work today, saw one of the ladies that I've known for years, and the first thing, she didn't even, she didn't even say good morning, she's like, yo, your makeup. <laughs> So this is what, because people are going to ask me, this is what I use for my makeup. This is what I have on. So this is Ofra. I have this color on. That's the only color that I use. And then I this is Ofra 2. I have this color on. Oh, y'all see all of that. It's a brown. And you just do your makeup. Do your gloss. Ofra, I think it's like a clean brand. It is... make Eyeshadow is expensive. So it is like 30 some dollars. I actually like this. So I just really bought it. Recently bought it, really bought it. And um, I got a lot of compliments from people today in regarding. But um, yo, you got to know how to... Do your makeup. Don't wait until it's a pan. Don't wait, period. Pandemic, whatever. You should be able to stay at home and do hair, makeup, and go out into the world without going to the salon or whatever. The only thing I'm going to tell you guys that I, I don't do, that I probably could do, is my nails. My nails, I go and get them done. These are my nails, you know. Not too long, not too short, very girly. That's what you do, right? And then somebody asked me, oh, what about your gloss? This is Milani gloss. Love this gloss. You know, so see how your makeup, well, how your makeup. But my makeup is like all soft, not too crazy, Work friendly, little bit of color. I have on white and mint green. I think I'm ready for um spring. I'm ready for spring. That's probably why I have light colors on. So today, white, mint, green, and brown. These are my colors. So, ladies, learn how to do your makeup without um always running to the salon or running to somebody don't get me wrong yes you want to feel pretty or whatever you go to the makeup artist and pay to get your makeup done but you need to learn and do your own that's all i'm saying anyway people are gonna ask um so yeah a lot of i got a lot of compliments about my makeup as always and then my best friend today asked me, what kind of sweater you have on? And I like this sweater because it's like, I went to work. Like, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to wear to work. And I wear, every time I go to work, I get the crazy looks. And it, it, I guess it's good looks. What's up? I, <laughs> I get like what she got on today. So today, I think it's because I'm ready for spring. I want to throw winter out even though don't get me wrong i love uh winter but i love spring and summer mainly and i'm ready for it once i'm over it and i'm blessed to be alive but they was like hey they was like um what you got on girl this is cute <laughs> so if you ever and i like odd clothes so if you ever like are looking for um, a uh, arm sweater. Now they're coming out with these things called arm sweaters. So mainly it is an arm sweater. So just say like this is a summer top. It's like a sweater, but it's a summer top. And usually, you know, you can't go to work. Um, with this, I couldn't go to work with this because I'm like, oh, this is too sexy. So now when it's winter, you could just throw on. They have these sweaters that are just for your arms it is so cute i can't wait to eventually do what's up stony brook beats 
I can't wait to eventually um, incorporate a lot of fashion stuff on my channel because people ask me all the time. But I got this from Zara. Zara is one of my favorite stores. And I went to work and they thought, they thought I was going on a date or something. And I was not. I was coming to work in the snow. But yeah, overall, guys, I'm saying this is to, you don't got to spend tons of money to look great. Just know and figure out what you like as far as your style, your look. You don't have to have tons of makeup on. Learn how to do your makeup. Go to YouTube. Don't get me wrong. Everybody on YouTube can't do makeup because they be looking, some of them videos be looking crazy. But figure out what kind of look. I usually like soft glam look or something not too crazy. And I think this is like... Not too crazy, but it's it's definitely me. Soft glam. So, figure out your style, your look, and then take it from there and bring out your best versions. But remember, you can have nice clothes, nice hair, nice makeup, nice presentation. But listen, you also got to have integrity and character, and that comes a long way. In the words of my mother, rest in peace to my mother, your name is all you have. So, before anything, guys, my name is all I have, which is positivity, integrity, morals, and doing the right thing. Anyway, I know I talked the whole in your head, but anyway, I will see you soon. Take care. Please be safe. Like I was telling you guys, think about this. Prepare yourself. Have food. Store and stock up on perishable items. If you can, try to look for a generator because it's getting real out here. Um, definitely sending prayers to everybody in Texas and whoever else, Midwest, who do not have heat and um, experiencing flooding, all that. That is traumatic. But um, just be grateful that we are here to see another day. It's 2021. Yes, it's been a little rough, but not as bad as 2020. But I just hope it doesn't get any worse. Other than that, talk to you soon. Thank you for watching my um, live. Thank you for liking my pictures. Shout outs to my followers. Shout outs to people that I follow. Welcome the all the new followers. And yes, I am on YouTube. I will be doing more videos. Uh, last but not least, I'm working with a dope producer upcoming producer on a ep and i'm excited about that as well as people are reaching out to me to work on future projects so we will see where that goes but right now i'm working with this producer i want to present this uh producer to you because he is dope and a lot of times you have up-and-coming artists or even artists that's been around for a long time and people know nothing about you need to encourage them to be their very best and push them and help them organizing and stop taking and stealing money from them and try to help them with um their goals and dreams because that's you know we're here to help each other and i and for me speaking in regards to artist management that's always been my thing is to help artist but it i'm gonna tell you something i also gotta believe in your music and like your music you know because it's kind of hard to try to work with somebody that you don't like the music and a lot of managers out here that they do that so if you are a manager or if you are an artist and you're looking for a manager make sure artists make sure you get a manager who has passion and it loves your music it wants to invest time and energy because it is a lot of work it is strenuous work and let me tell you hopefully in a few years or so i will come out with a bio a book about my experience with artist management which has been brutal crucial and the list goes on the good the bad the accomplishments everything so i definitely want to let you know that but anyway guys take care be safe love is love and thank you for watching my live peace and this is Avani. Oh.